Thank you so much for letting me join you tonight. This is an entirely imperfect video, which is good, because if I was trying to make it perfect, I wouldn't be making it at all. I'm so glad to be in front of the camera again talking to you, and um, I guess I've got to say the obligatory, it's been a while. <laughs> But it has been a while, and <sighs> it's nice to be here. I am recording this now on the 21st, which is the winter solstice, and I find that day, uh, this day of the year, to be magical. I, it's, it's depressing in a way, but it's also really exciting, because with the shortest day of the year, comes longer and longer days, and then we get to the summer solstice, where it all kind of <laughs> goes back again to getting shorter, but this is a magical time of year because uh, the year is winding down, and hopefully you have your Christmas presents for your family and friends all bought, and if you don't have many family members or friends, just enjoying yourself by the fire. And if you're not enjoying yourself by the fire because it's a million degrees because you live in Texas like I do, then I hope that you're enjoying yourself and you're enjoying the lights that are around you. And if you find yourself in a sad place, I hope that you'll visit me and I hope that I can cheer you up. I have wanted to make a video like this for two years. I made a video in 2014, um, with this same book, actually, and the next year I planned a whole video all over again with different stories, and, um, something really sad happened in my life, and I had to focus on my health, and it happened right before Christmas, and then the next year, uh, something really exciting was happening in my life, and my body was working really hard to make a beautiful, healthy baby that's here today, and I was way too exhausted to even think about making this video. <sighs> Unfortunately, this is not going to be the same video that I envisioned, but I'm going to share with you one of my favorite Christmas stories today, and I hope that it brings you happiness. Because really, when I first created this channel, I wanted to provide ASMR for people, and I wanted to provide people with happiness. Especially people who maybe don't feel very happy when they first watch a video. <laughs> so, we're just kind of coming back to simpler times on the AGL Accidentally Graceful channel. I hope that you will continue to listen. start by reading, and I apologize, and I don't have my, um, mineral mics today, because uh, I don't know where they are. We have moved a lot, <laughs> um, three times in the last year and a half, so, and I'm not complaining, but sometimes you misplace things, but they'll turn up. They'll turn up. I'm going to be reading you Papa Panov's special Christmas. I am sorry to the Russians out there if I am butchering your language. Papa Panov's special Christmas, retold by Leo Tolstoy. Leo Tolstoy was a Russian author whose novels include War and Peace and Anna Karenina. He was born into an aristocratic family, but became disillusioned with the wealth and power. Of Russian society. He decided to join the army with his brother Nicholas and wrote his first novel, Childhood as a Soldier. After fighting in the Crimean War, he dedicated his life to improving conditions for the working classes of Russia, setting up soup kitchens 
and campaigning for their rights. Tolstoy's novels reflect his interest in social justice and spiritualism, but eventually his radical views led to his being excommunicated from the Orthodox Church and his writing was censored. Tolstoy found publishers abroad and he is now regarded as one of the most important Russian novelists. Panov's Special Christmas, retold by Leo Tolstoy. It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of the little Russian village, for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped from closed shutters. Old Papa Panov, the village shoemaker, stepped outside his shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded him of past Christmas times, when his wife had still been alive and his own children little. Now they had gone. His usually cheerful face with the little laughter wrinkles behind the round steel spectacles looked sad now. But he went back indoors with a firm step, put up the shutters, and set a pot of coffee to heat on the stove. Then, with a sigh, he settled in his big armchair. Papa Panoff did not often read. But tonight he pulled down the big old family Bible and, slowly tracing the lines with one forefinger, he read again the Christmas story. He read how Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them at the inn, so that Mary's little baby was born in the cow shed. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Papa Panov. If only they had come here. I would have given them my bed, and I could have covered the baby with my patchwork quilt to keep him warm. He read on about the wise men who had come to see the baby Jesus, bringing him splendid gifts. Papa Panov's face fell. I have no gift that I could give him, he thought sadly. Then his face brightened. He put down the Bible, got up, and stretched his long arms to the shelf high up in his little room. He took down a small, dusty box, and wiped it, and, and opened it. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes. Papa Panov smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he had remembered, the best shoes he had ever made. I should give him those, he decided, as he gently put them away and sat down again. He was feeling tired now, and the further he read, the sleepier he became. The print began to dance before his eyes, so that he closed them just for a minute. In no time at all, Papa Panov was fast asleep. And as he slept, he dreamed that someone was in his room, and he knew it once as one does in dreams, who the person was. It was Jesus. You have been wishing that you could see me, Papa Panov, he said kindly. Then look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day, and I will visit you. But look carefully for I shall not tell you who I am. When at last Papa Panov awoke, the bells were ringing out and a thin light was filtering through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Papa Panov. It's Christmas Day. 
He stood up and stretched himself, for he was rather stiff. Then his face filled with happiness as he remembered his dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all, for Jesus was coming to visit him. How would he look? Would he be a little baby, as at that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, or the great king that he is, God's son? He must watch carefully the whole day through, so that he recognized him however he came. Papa Panoff put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, took down the shutters, and looked out of the window. The street was deserted. No one was stirring yet. No one except the road sweeper. He looked as miserable and dirty as ever, and, and well he might. Whoever wanted to work on Christmas Day, and in the raw, cold, and bitter freezing mist of such a morning, Papa Panoff opened the shop door, letting in a thin stream of cold air. Come in, he shouted across the street cheerfully. Come in and have some hot coffee to keep out the cold. The sweeper looked up, scarcely able to believe his ears. He was only too glad to put down his broom and come into the warm room. His old clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove, and he clasped both red hands round the comforting, warm mug as he drank. Papa Panoff watched him with satisfaction, but every now and then his eyes strayed to the window. It would never do to miss his special visitor. Expecting someone? The sweeper asked at last. So Papa Panoff told him about his dream. Well, I hope he comes, the sweeper said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I'd say you deserve to have your dream come true. And he actually smiled. When he had gone, Papa Panoff put on cabbage soup for his dinner, then went to the door again, scanning the street. He saw no one, but he was mistaken. Someone was coming. The girl walked so slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of shops and houses, that it was a while before he noticed her. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew nearer, he could see that it was a baby, wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such sadness in her face, in the pinched little face of a baby, that Papa Panoff's heart went out to them. Won't you come in, he said, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm by the fire and a rest. The young mother let him shepherd her indoors into the comfort of the armchair. She gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Papa Panoff said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby from a spoon, warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, the cobbler said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I've got no husband to bring home money. I'm on my way to the next village to get work. A sudden thought flashed through Papa Panov's mind. He remembered the little shoes he had looked at last night, but he'd been keeping those for Jesus. He looked again at the cold little feet and made up his mind. <sighs> Sorry, I just... I love this story and I get very emotional reading it. <clears throat> Try these on her, he said, handing the baby and the shoes to the mother. The beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The girl smiled happily, and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You've been so kind to us, the girl said when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. But Papa Panoff was beginning to wonder if his very special Christmas wish would come true. Perhaps he had missed his visitor. He looked anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces that he recognized. There were neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished him Happy Christmas. Or beggars, 
and Papa Panoff hurried indoors to fetch them hot soup and a generous hunk of bread, hurrying out again in case he missed the important stranger. All too soon the winter dusk fell. When Papa Panoff next went to the door and strained his eyes, he could no longer make out the passers-by. Most were home and indoors by now anyway. He walked slowly back into his room at last, put up the shutters, and sat down wearily in his armchair. So it had been just a dream after all. Jesus had not come. Then, all at once, he knew that he was no longer alone in the room. This was not a dream, for he was wide awake. At first he seemed to see before his eyes the long stream of people who had come to him that day. He saw again the old road sweeper, the young mother and her baby and the beggars he had fed. As they passed, each whispered, Didn't you see me, Papa Benoff? Who are you? he called out, bewildered. Then another voice answered him. It was the voice from his dream, the voice of Jesus. hungry and you fed me, he said. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I came to you today in every one of those you helped and welcomed. <sighs> then all was quiet and still. Only the sound of the big clock ticking. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing Papa Panov's heart until he wanted to burst out singing and laughing and dancing with joy. So he did come after all, was all that he said. <sighs> I think that this is such a beautiful message. And it literally sends me to tears every time. And I've actually composed myself pretty well, so that must tell you um, how it makes me feel. I hope you have very happy holidays. And if you do celebrate it, I hope you have a wonderful, merry, happy, joyous Christmas. Thank you so much again for letting me join you. Have a wonderful, restful, peaceful day or night. And I hope that you'll let me join you again.